Zender is one of the most well-known European tuners. It's hard to find another tuner that has worked with such a wide range of cars. They have built body kits for cars like the Renault 11, Ford Sierra, Maserati Biturbo and Fat Romeo Sprint, Ferrari 512 BBI, 328 and of course the W126. But besides building body kits and wheels, they also have managed to build a number of cars under their name. Cars which could have gone head to head with the best that Ferrari, Porsche and Lamborghini could offer back then. So hello guys and welcome back to another video and here is the story of Zender and their cars. Zender was founded in 1969 by Hans Albert Zender in the German town of Mulhen Kerlik. The company originally was called Haas, which was a abbreviation of the initials of Hans, which started the company at the age of 23 at his garage, by making bucket seats by hand. Only in 1974 he would start to build body parts like front and rear bumpers and spoilers. And thanks to this, one year later Zender signed a deal with Ford and Volkswagen for their race cars, something that definitely helped him on creating a name. In 1977 Zender presented the Scirocco Group 5. This was just a case study to show what Zender could do. But it would be in the 80s when Zender would find its true success which was the golden age of the German tuning. They started making more kits and for more brands, and so they needed something to put them in the map. And in 1983 came the Vision 1S. The Vision 1S started out as Audi Quattro, which at the time was dominating the rally stages around the world. But then they only kept the powertrain and the floor assembly, and after that changed everything. Like most of the supercars of the time, the Vision had a tubular steel frame, while the body was made out of fiberglass. The 2.2 liter straight 5 engine could produce up to 300 horsepower, while the top speed was from 235 to 270 km per hour, depending on the configuration. Now there are some sources that say that the Vision 1S was built in small numbers, but that's highly doubtful. In 85 and 86 came the Vision 2 and the Vision 3 Roadster. The cars were evolution of each other and were only design studies. The car looked pretty good for the time and checked all the 80s design marks, like the wedge shape, side strike, scissor doors and pop-up headlights. But these cars were just design studies with no running gear. The running car would come in 1987 in, under the name Vision 3. Then there went for a Mercedes V8 that came from the 560 SEL. The power was at 300 horsepower, the top speed at 280 km per hour and the acceleration time at 6 seconds. Again, the car didn't go into production, while in 1989 would come probably the best car the Effect 4x Turbo. Differently from the Vision, the Effect was built with the plans to go into production. The car was designed by Gunther Zillner, which was the Zender designer. And the car looked pretty good for the 90s. The engine came from Audi and was a 3.6 liter V8, packed with a pair of turbos which increased the power to 450 horsepower and 390 pound-foot of torque. And according to Zender, the top speed was at 299 km per hour and the acceleration time at 4.3 seconds. 
Center would continue to develop the car and in 1991 they presented this Spider version. Sadly, Zender again failed to put the car into production. By the 90s, the tuning business started to fall down and wasn't doing that great. But this didn't matter since they also were a dealer selling Ferraris, Maseratis, Mercedes and other luxury cars. So despite this, they continued to build cars under their name. And in 1991 came the Swiftster. The car was built from a request of Suzuki which wanted to build a racing car based on his Swift. Based on his Swift GTI, the car looked like a ton of fun. But only the kit made it into the market, and the Speedster version just remained a concept. After Suzuki, Alfa Romeo approached them, and in 1995 came the Progetto Cinque. The floor plan and the mechanical parts came from the Alfa Romeo 75, while like the previous cars, the Progetto Cinque received a tubular steel frame. The design was a mix of old Alfa Romeos and the new Spider, which was presented in 1993. And the car looked pretty good, looked like a concept made by Alfa Romeo. But this was just to show what Zender could do with Alphas. Two years later came the Escape 6. The design maybe isn't the best, but the car was based on the Lotus Elise while the engine was a Volkswagen 2.8 liter V6 with 175 horsepower, which when you consider that the car only had a curb weight of 850 kilos, is more than enough. While in 1999 they presented the Zender 37, it was built to celebrate Zender's 30th anniversary, while 7 meant that it was the 7th study from the tuning house. Like uh, with the Escape, the chassis came from Lotus. The engine came again from Volkswagen, just that this time was a turbocharged 1.8 liter straight 4, which produced 240 horsepower. The top speed was at 240 km per hour, and the acceleration time at 5.4 seconds. And finally, we come in 2001, when Zender presented his straight 8. The name came from the engine, since the car used a BMW straight 6. In fact, underneath the car was a BMW M3 Cabrio, so all the performance numbers were basically the same. Just that the car came with a totally different body. Sadly, the 8th study of Zender would be also the last one. In 2008, Zender would close the tuning division in Germany while the name was bought by a company which offers body kits for Fiat's and Alfa Romeo's. It's sad to see so many great missed opportunities from Zender, since all their cars looked pretty amazing. So guys, thank you for watching and see you next time.